Hey, what's up, boys and girls? We are gonna talk today about the winter mitts. So this is the fifth video in the series where we're gonna look at every single piece of level 60 equipment for war gear. So, so far we have looked at the Bumble Elm, the firewall plate, we have looked at the Storm Tasset. Also, let me equip this. We have looked also at the Ambrosial Cup, and now today we're gonna talk about the Often Winter Mints. So as you can see, so far I'm free to play. I've only gotten two piece uh, of, in my mix set, two gold and mythic. The Winter Mints are the easiest one to level up, which are usually part of almost every player's mix set. And there's a couple reasons for that. So let's first look at um, basically the winter mitts. Let's go in the cabinet. Um, doinks, you guys don't need to see this. So in the cabinets we have, um, basically if you go to the often, we're gonna go see the, um, where are the mitts? There they are. So obviously the mitts, uh, they're made from uh, festive bells. Uh, that comes from Snow Beast. Uh, you only need four uh, rares to level this up. It's one of the easiest one to level up and, and for the fact that it's only four rares that you need <laughs> the reason why also why it's really easy is that because on a daily basis you guys should be getting four chests, four snow beast chests. Um, that makes it really easy. Uh, one of the other ways to get the bells is from Labyrinth. So right now it's the frost wing rotation. So obviously we don't get this, but whenever it's the specific rotation, uh, you can get uh, Festil Bell from there. So what's so great about the Winter Mints? So if you look at the stats, and I, sh I should really be looking at the stats without my um, my jewels on. So let's go back to the, um, uh, we're going to go today, look at it at a purple grade. So we've been doing that with every single piece of equipment at purple grade, because mainly free to play players will own, will achieve like easily achieve blue and purple grade on most equipment. Now with the winter mitts, it's really easy or easier to get to gold and then mythic. Um, I've gotten the winter mitts to gold on all my accounts. Uh, two of them at mythic and uh, and the, the let's say the, the account that's the youngest is, is about like two years old. It took me about two years to get the winter mitts to gold. So really easy compared to everything else. So basically what's the stats breaks down, you got little bit of range attack it's not that much you get a lot of defense total defense is, a, is really huge we're talking about 15 per 15.5 percent uh, army so that equates to 46.5 plus 20 uh, 20.5 so basically 67 at purple grade total and then you get uh 46.5 total army hp uh when you when you add the when you multiply the army by the three troop type we're not going to look at siege there's no point so first of all let's look at what we're going to compare it to so let's bring up these little chart that i've been doing so the first one we want to look at is obviously the eternal codex so the eternal codex is usually what people argue with is, is should I be doing the winter mid? Should I be doing the eternal codex? So both of them are, are level 50, 60, sorry. And both of them are really the only option that you should be building with the rares that you have. So, so when you look at the stats difference, you'll notice obviously you get a lot more attack from the eternal codex and you get a lot less HP. And the defense, the 67% total defense that you get from the winter mids, Obviously, you need to ratio that. The personal ratio that I use is about five, per, oh, five to one. So basically, 67 uh, percent defense would equate to about, let's say, 13 total attack. So basically, you really want to compare like 20 percent total attack compared to 35 percent attack from the uh, Eternal Codex. So basically, you get about 15 percent more attack from the Codex, but you lose 33 percent HP. And if you're like me and you value HP very close to attack, 
maybe not to a one-to-one ratio, but let's say 1.5, then at that point that uh, whatever you gain, the 15% that you gain from the Eternal Codex on attack really doesn't make it up uh, based on the 33% HP. So in my book, on a mix set, while defending, defending, it's all, the wind permits are gonna, always gonna win against the Eternal Codex. Now, with attack, the thing is with attack is when you're attacking for a blast, uh, a blast set, uh, you're gonna be, you're gonna want to attack. So that is why on a blast set, it's probably better to use the codex. Um, but as you can see, probably only for cav because even for range, when you look at this, well, let's say for range, no, I, I would say that even for range, the eternal codex would be better, uh, but it would not be that much better compared to Cav. Now, the thing is, there's a cost difference. Uh, it's a lot easier to build uh, the Winter Mitts. It's half the rares. So basically, you will get way faster to purple than with the Eternal Codex. Uh, and then, obviously, you're gonna get to gold faster. <laughs> you're gonna get to mythic faster. Uh, I personally, on all my accounts, I have not achieved a gold codex yet. And like I said, I have gold winter mitts on all accounts and two of them at mythic. So this is why in my book, the winter mitt wins, especially on a mix set. And even not on a mix set, it is, it is still better. I would, I, obviously I would not, I would use the codex on a blast uh, cab attack, not necessarily anything else. All right, let's look at the second uh, second piece of equipment that we sometimes or often see. So the second one is, are there any teams Cold Rusher in the house? The Dark Ages. The Dark Ages, and I will compare it gold because the last three pieces of equipment that I will compare it to, in fact, the la there's gonna be four. Uh, the, the Dark Ages, it's only, well, it's this one is a one rare piece equipment so and the last three are going to be two uh two rares so it's going to be a little bit different but it's a level 50. this only provides attack so in total 40 percent attack so like i said if you um if you do the ratio i i would argue that the total attack for the winter mitts when you convert the defense is about 20 percent so basically you gain 20 percent attack with the dark ages but you lose 46.5 percent attack once again, it is, the winter mitts are better. And as far as the cost goes, it's about the same. In fact, it's only one gray more. So if you do the ratio, you will notice that um, those four, four purple, obviously they, equa they equate to one gold. So then, so when you add all of those up, the only difference is the first gray that you need for the dark ages. So this is why uh, you get about one point. 33 gold to build both of them to this. At this point, I still obviously think that the Winter Mitz wins. If you're looking at pure attack with the pack five in pack, obviously from a free to play perspective, you don't really have a lot of players with pack five familiars unlocked, maxed out and stuff like that. So I don't think, I don't think it will work. Uh, I don't think it would apply to a lot of people. And secondly, if you're taking a rally and you have pack five familiars and they proc, that means you don't have enough troops. <laughs> so I would still say that the winter mitts wins against the dark ages. Now, once again, if you do the dark ages, those are all rares that will delay your skull crusher or your burning scrolls. So basically guys, you always wanna make sure that you build. So basically with the winter mitts, there's no alternative. You don't build a parka, what's the other one? The other one is trash too. So you really wanna build the winter mitts. Um, and by building the dark ages, you just delay better equipment that you can be doing with the brains. Now let's move on to uh, another one that I wanna talk about and it's the dragon's fist. Now it's uh, also a level 50, but one thing you're gonna notice it is two rare, so basically it's twice the cost. Now let's look at the stats. The total attack for the Dragon's Fist is 
But look at that total HP, 60%. So now it becomes a great, great argument. So obviously it's twice the cost, but the Dragon's Fist provides better stats. Yes, better stats. So basically, if, if we say that the total attack with the defense would be about 20%, so obviously you get 2% more attack and you get like 13% more HP. It is better. Once again, the difference here is that is the cost, obviously. It's going to take you a longer time to get the Dragon's Fist of Gold because it's twice the rares. And the other cost is the opportunity cost. Once again, if you build the Dragon's Fist, that means that your, uh, that your Dragon's Talents or if you decide to go with the Iris, the accessory, you're just going to delay those. So once again, it's a big decision to make. I would still say that the Winter Mitts is the best option in the often position. Like I said, if you are going for the Storm Tacit and you're going to bypass the Dragon's Talon, I would say it would not be a bad alternative though in that scenario. But at the end of the day, the Dragon's Talon is a really great piece in the leg for a range blast. So. Do you really want to be? Do you really want to go with the Dragon's Fist just because it's gonna give you a little bit more stats in the often at the expense of uh, lower stats in your legs? It's basically the the decision you have to make. Now, on the other end, I'm talking about from a mix set perspective. So obviously, if you you want to go, if you want to bypass the Dragon's Town because you want to go with the Storm Tacit. Then you really don't you're really not looking at the dragon's talent for the range blast in that case i would say it's a good argument to go with the dragon's fist once again it's going to take you a longer time and the thing is once once you get the dragon's fist to mythic it is going you're gonna have basically the same difference between gold and mythic but you will eventually get your winter myths to mythic and at that point the winter myths on a same grade basis, the Winter Mitts are better. So, this is why I go with the Winter Mitts. Next up, or should I say the last one I want to show. So, the last one I want to show is the Call of the Deep. Call of the Deep is uh, also a two rare uh, piece of gear. And it uh, it's built with pearls from the Tidal Titan. Now, if we look at this, same thing, same analysis applies. You get about 10% more attack if you convert the defense. Once again, I want to say that my ratio is 1 to 5, meaning that this worth about 13% attack. So 10% more attack with the Call of the Deep, but you lose out on 26% HP. Um, if you get a ratio of 1 attack equals 1.5% HP, then that means that you would most likely want to build the Winter Mitts, especially since it's cheaper. Like I said, it's half the rares. So in that case, once again, the Winter Mitts wins. And the same scenario applies also with the Opportunity Cuss. It, all the rares that you put in the Call of the Deep will just delay your Storm Tacits. It's always the same decision, guys. That's why I say that in most scenario. You should always forge a level 60 piece of equipment. All right, let's go back to the cabinet. So guys, remember this, remember this. Call of the Deep uh, is a two rares. It provides 30% attack and 20% HP. Well, I don't have a chart for that, but I'm gonna show you in the cabinet what I mean. Okay, uh, the last one I wanna talk about is the Viral Switchblade. And if you look at this, you get also 30% attack, you don't get any HP. And it's and it's a two rare also, and those rare could be used for a, um, a fire plate, a firewall plate, the Mecha Trojan. So, and once again, the Siege, we don't talk about it. It really does not matter. So once again, there's no reason to build a viral switchblade that Winter Mitts just beat these piece of equipment. Now, the last thing. So I said I wouldn't talk about champion. So if we look at champion, let's look at those side. Well, it's not side by side, but you know what I mean. So I said 
that army, uh, that defense is a ratio of one to five. So if you uh, multiply all this, you get 39 divided by five, you get about eight. So if you had all of this together, uh, that's about 50% attack from the champion light. So we said that 50% attack from the champion light compared to about 20% 20, um, 20 attack from the winter mitts. So we're talking about that purple grade at the same grade. So you get about 30% more attack from the champion light, from all the champion gear, basically on the often. And then basically you have to ask yourself, is 30% attack better than 45 or 46% HP? I said I use a ratio of about 1.5. So in my book, those are the same. They are worth the same in terms of stats. The big difference is you get a lot more attack, which is really good on a blast set when you're attacking and you have pack five familiars. On a mix set, when you're defending, once again, the winter mids to me are better. So, and obviously from a free to play perspective, if you get purple winter mitts, you probably don't have purple champion often. I've achieved champion often at purple grade on two accounts. And like I said, I have gold and mythic winter mitts. So if I compare the if I compare one grade above, then the winter mitts are still gonna be better. When you look at this. Look at this, look at this, 75% uh, total HP. Uh, you get uh, about like 100% uh, defense. So that equates about 30% attack. So that would be about 30% total attack. Um, so basically you'd lose about 20% attack going with the purple champion. And but <laughs> is 20% attack better than 75% HP on a mix set when you're defending. Hell no. And this is why, guys, the winter mitts are like the best piece in the outfit. I have not talked about the Lunar Boomerang. I have not talked about the Eerie Lantern and the Spirit Axe and the Venom Blade. Because we're doing this from a free-to-play perspective. So these pieces of equipment, especially the Venom Blade, Venom Blade is really, really hard to level up. I think I have a gray one. That's it. Uh, the Spirit Axe is also really hard to get uh, because you need 15 rares and you can only get those like from the Monstrous Crate. Uh, Eerie Lantern, same thing with the Lunar Boomerang. Uh, you need less rares. So these are easier to level up, but still, um, from a free-to-play perspective, I think I got some of those at blue. So uh, if you look at this at blue and you try to compare that, <laughs> it's not a lot of stats. There's no army stats. So from a mix set perspective with the total stats, this is nothing. Like if you compare that to a purple winter mitts, this is nothing. Yes, the lunar boomerang is great for a blast set. And the Eerie Lantern is great for a blast set, so both Cav and Infantry. But that's it. They are not made for a mix set. Guys, it is just simple. The Winter Mitts are the best often that we can have for free to play and low pay to play and high pay to play. It's just the best piece of equipment and it only costs four rares. So, guys, let me know in the comments below. What do you have in your uh, mix set? Or um, because please, please, please don't talk to me about your blast set. Or if you have something else in your mix set and you're free to play or light pay to play, let me know in the comments below if this analysis has changed your mind about how you're gonna jewel whatever piece of equipment you have there or whatever piece of equipment you will swap for the <laughs> winter mitts. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video or in the next stream.